What is up you guys? Welcome to another Tuesday with Spencer here on FTM Transtastic. I am filming this outside because my apartment, I got locked out, so we're gonna do this video here. Um, this week we are talking about something that I really don't want to talk about. So we're discussing uh, the insanity that's currently going on in the states um, with police brutality. If you are unaware, there were two African American men that were killed by um, police officers. Um, this was caught on tape and overnight it blew up on social media, which is how it became such a national thing. Um, and it's just, I'm not going to talk about the videos much, I'm just going to talk about how these events have affected my life um, thus far. So when Philando Castillo was killed, my father called me that morning and asked if we could have lunch. And I didn't know why he wanted lunch, um, but when we got there and sat down, it became evident what the reason was. So he tapped me down and told me things that he wanted me to know as a black man, um, because I'm being perceived as a black man to society, and how to interact with police as a black man. I wasn't expecting this, and I guess I just, I just wasn't expecting it. So the first thing he told me, um, if you watched my other video on gun control, you know that I do have the license to carry. So the first thing he told me is to always put my gun in my um, middle compartment. This is because if I ever get pulled over, I'll never be in the situation as Philando Castile, where he had his weapon, he had a license to carry and he did have a weapon, but his weapon was on the same side of his um, wallet. So when he went to reach for his wallet, like the police officer said, according to the girlfriend, because we don't know what his statement is because he hasn't released one yet, but according to the girlfriend, the officer asked him to reach for his wallet. When he went to reach for it, he got shot um, because it was on the same side of his gun. So he said I would never have to have that case if I always put it in the middle compartment of my, <laughs> in my car. Um, and he said not to put it in the glove box because when I reach for my registration, which is in the glove box, it won't be seen. Um, the second thing he told me was to always keep my wallet in a cup holder. And he said that, um, and he also said to always give my military ID. And he said like giving my military ID, it establishes some type of familiarity and makes me seem less of a target to the police officers. Um, as well as having my wallet in, the, in a cup holder the police officer can see everything that I'm doing, so it leaves nothing up to the imagination for the officer. And the third and probably the most profound thing that he told me was, when I am being pulled over, to always assume I am a threat. This is so different from what my parents taught me for respecting authority. Um, they always taught me that they're there to help that they just want to get the situation, never lie, always tell the truth, they're your friends, blah blah blah, but but to say that I'm, to always assume I'm a threat, and to speak of the level of distrust that police officers have against African Americans, really kind of, kind of it kind of shook me, because I've always been an authority figure as a military member, um, I've, I've been supposedly a sign of peace to wherever we are. Um, and that's what police officers are supposed to represent, a sign of peace um, or a sign of help to, to a citizen. So for me to be seen, to me to always assume that they don't look at me as helping, but as a threat, as something to dispose of, kind of really just like shook me for a minute. I, I have no words. I have no words for this. This has got to stop. Police brutality in America has got to stop. People trying to find like loopholes or minute things to somehow make the police officer seem like they were in the right has got to stop. We as America, as Americans, need to be able to face the fact that we have a problem with police brutality and racial profiling in the states. It literally blows my mind that I felt safer overseas in the desert than I do in Georgia. It blows my mind that I felt safer driving a Humvee in Iraq and Qatar than I do ride, driving my car in the suburbs of Atlanta. It, it is absurd and I, 
I just, I have no words. I have no words. One thing that I'm, I don't know if you guys know because it didn't get such a national publicity as of the two shootings is that um, the day after Philando Castile passed away, that morning, a man was found hanging in Piedmont Park in Atlanta. And it has been reported that a KKK rally happened that the night before. Uh, it's a huge deal because no local news nor national news covers this story. And when asked by when CNN was asked why not, they said they don't cover a suicide, which is hilarious because an autopsy has not been done on this gentleman. So how the hell are they going to declare it a, a suicide when they have no idea how the person died? Now our mayor Kasim Reed. Um, has turned that case over to the FBI. There is a full investigation as well as an autopsy being under um, underhead and there has not been any updates on it yet. So I'm like, you know, I'm proud supporters of Kasim Reed. He's he's awesome. But um, it just like, it shows you just how little coverage things are getting because, I, I, I don't know, because of racism, I guess, because of racism. I'm gonna tell you guys a story about Five months ago, I was pulled over. Um, I didn't have my lights on and it was nighttime. I just forgot to put them on. I was pulled over. And when the officer came up, he said, hey, how's you going, sir? I'm like, not much. Uh, what happened? He's like, you don't have your lights on. I was like, oh, I forgot to turn them on. He said, turn them on. I turned them on. He's like, oh, okay, they work. Can we get license and registration? And for a split second, I froze in fear. And the reason being is because the off chance that I did not take my holster out of my left my left hip and I keep my wallet in my left back pocket I froze because I didn't know what to do and I can so easily I could have so easily become Philando Castile I could have so easily gone the way he did so obviously I'm here today what happened was I told I declared my weapon the officer asked me to step out of the car he disarmed me. I gave him my license and registration, as well as my um, weapons carry license. Everything checked out. He gave me a warning and sent me on my way. So I don't know if that was correct protocol, and if so, why the fuck didn't the guy do that when he was dealing with Philando Castile? I don't know, but it just it just shows that like officers, for whatever reason, are so terrified of my skin that they literally lose all sense of like I like purpose and all sense of protocol and just like fucking fire. How are we supposedly the safest nation, the strongest nation, and we can't keep our shit together just because somebody approaches you with a different skin color? I'm sorry, I'm losing light, so you're just going to get sh shadow for a minute. I don't know. It just it it completely baffles me. I really want to know what the fuck they get taught at the police academy because if I'm able to literally ward off insurgents with just me and my flight, there's no reason why two armed men can't take down one who wasn't flailing his weapon. There's no reason why an armed officer should feel so threatened that they can't, like, just tell the person, if they felt threatened, tell the person to get out the car and disarm them. Like, there's no reason why this should have happened. No reason at all. Another way this is, like, hugely infecting my life, and this is probably the worst way, is unfortunately my job. Um, if you're unaware, there is this Blue Lives Matter hashtag that's going on that's completely bullshit, and I will unfriend you if you do Blue Lives Matter. That is the worst, that is just fucked up. If you... Like, the Blue Lives Matter is not just police officers, it's firefighters as well as EMS. My job, my EMT job, passed out blue ribbons. Now, Atlanta currently has the most peaceful protest going on right now. Um, there was a couple, there's been a lot of protests around um, in the states. The most deadly has been in Dallas, Texas, where... Ten officers were shot, five of them were killed. There's also an instance, I think, in Tennessee where two officers were shot in their car. There's also an instance where two, two bailiffs were shot in their car and killed. Um, so obviously this is growing violent, and I do not condone violence at all, but um, this, is, this should show you just how pissed off people are becoming, and just how angry people are, and how hurt people are, and how they are sick and tired of hashtags just like I am. But 
they were passing out Blue Lives Matter ribbons. And of course, none of the black people put forward them. But my, my um, partner is white. And though I've explained over and over why this ribbon and why Blue Lives Matter is inconsiderate, he still wears his ribbon. And the problem that I've run into is in um, on Saturday, when I worked at the EMT, seven of my 15 calls were to the protests that are going on in Atlanta. None of them was from violent acts. All of them are from heat exhaustion or something like that. Um, or tripping and falling and hurting themselves, but none of them was from violent acts. But when they see me, and they see my white officer with a Blue Lives Matter ribbon, and they look at me, they look at me with such disgust, like, how could I support that? Like, somehow, we're connected. Like, just because he has it, obviously, it means I support it, too, and they're just you're just done. They look at me like you're just done with me. They're like, how can you sell out your race? And obviously, that's not the case. And that makes me just so infuriated because one, I don't understand why people believe that just because we say black lives matter means that all other lives don't. Like, I don't know where people got that idea, but that's, the, that's not the case. It's the same, like, argument with, like, oh, why don't we have a white history month? Like, that same argument. Like, it's just bullshit. Like, just because we have a, a saying or a hashtag or a whatever doesn't mean that we completely disregard all other walks of life. It's just, unfortunately, we have to remind people that black lives matter and that black lives are human lives because after recent events, people are still slaughtering us like fucking animals. So that's kind of why we have this hashtag and we don't need fucking blue lives matter because people aren't slaughtering EMS, firefighters, and police officers like animals. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what, why people like don't can't grasp that, but they have this idea that you're either for one or the other. And it's just, I just, it's just, I can't, I can't do it. One of the people that we picked up looked me right in the eyes and said, how could you sell out your race? And I know they're just angry. And I know if they knew, they would understand. And I know if they knew how many times I tried to tell him how inappropriate this is. I know if they knew how hard I tried to get it off of him. I know if they knew, they would understand that I don't in any way not support them and but they don't and they just see it and they just say these things and it hurts me because it just hurts me it just hurts I hate this topic I hate this topic so much because I'm the only one on this channel who actually is affected by this Yes, everybody in this channel is going to say Black Lives Matter. Everyone in this channel has been nothing but supportive. But I am the only person who goes through day after day whose parents had to take them and tell them how they should interact with cops, how, where they should put their wallet, how they should look them in the eye. I'm the one who has to deal with this on a daily basis. I am the only one on this channel who knows, and I hate this topic so much because I don't know what to tell you. So many people on my Facebook friends have messaged me like, I don't know how to support you, and I don't know what to say. We are so sick of prayers and so sick of seeing hashtags. We want action. And I'm not mad of people telling me that their prayers are with me. I'm a religious person, and every prayer means a lot to me. Thank you. I'm not mad. I'm just so sick of this being a hashtag, and then the next day we're doing, we're talking about Pokemon Go or the Olympic trials. It doesn't end in 24 hours for me. It doesn't end in 24 hours for my community. I'm gonna stop this video because I feel like I'm just gonna like start cussing everybody out and everyone on here is gonna hate me and I, you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. If you wanna support the POC community, it is nice to just send them send your friends a message and tell them that though you don't understand you'll help carry whatever burden they have and just let them know you're there and protest with them or or not you know I don't know I don't know what to tell you it's Tuesday it's Spencer until next time